Any to order? Are there any changes or additions to the agenda as presented? Uh, I do have one when we're talking about the resignation for the Regional Justice Committee. Uh, we received another resignation. Okay. Uh, this one resignation. Uh, also wanted to include the Grove Cemetery discussion under yep. the Evergreen. And I'd like to add a, an item of talk about next meeting and having a quorum or not. Is there anyone else has anything else? Seeing none. Uh, okay. Yes, you wouldn't mind. Sure. Is Carla coming tonight? I hadn't heard otherwise. Uh, it's probably a good idea so we've got it back in case. <laughs> Um, okay, so the first line is the athletic insurance. Next is the admin insights and analytics. Or, sorry, let me start over. Athletic insurance for four hundred dollars and one, four hundred one dollars and ten cents. Admin insights and analytics uh, for maintenance is three hundred and fifty dollars. Let me know if you want to stop anywhere. Analytics. What is that? You know, residence preservation for the historical society. Oh, thank you. Um, fuel for seven hundred thirty-five dollars and forty-four cents. Uh, uniform three hundred thirty-eight dollars and thirty-three cents. Uh, Alcohol tax overpayment of nine hundred eighty-six dollars. Country Home Center lumber. $158.47. Do you know what the lumber is for? I know, not specifically, I know that we've had a couple projects that would need lumber. Uh, we were repairing fence posts around Scribner Bridge, uh, and the guardrails there currently are lumber, so we're replacing them with lumber. Okay. Um, the park is on this Okay. Yeah, the skate park is also working on uh, security cameras for the skate park. Uh, they need a couple of posts that, that also could have gotten repairs for uh, part of it. Okay. 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 Um, Rosemary, just yeah. so you know, there, there's lumber here, and I think it's supposed to be put into the skate park. Perfect. Um, yes. Yes. Um, uh, um, let's see. Phone airtime for $35. Um, the extinguisher company for fire inspection. Uh, $105. And then there's a separate for fire inspection new tour from the village, $20, and the building maintenance $20 for a total of $40 additional. Um, also, different invoice five hundred and fifteen dollars fire inspection building maintenance do it from the village, $40. Um, another fire inspection building garage maintenance supplies, $205. For a total of $390. Welding supplies, a cylinder lease uh, for $278.50. Hillside trash for the skate park, $65. Uh, home maintenance service for the Historical Society, $170. Uh, library, municipal building, janitorial. Building ground maintenance, building maintenance and repair, repair supply, and due from the village to total of $780. Jewett loan payment with, uh, for the interest and the property, $3,516.13. Johnson Park uh, Harbor Rental, gloves, heat thinner, $22.59. Gas, 
1425, bolts 593, dog pillar 798, keys 398. What are the keys for? Rosemary, you probably look for specifically. Thing. I think there was some either skate park or recreation. I think that those were specifically for the local center, but I'm not positive about that. It was recreate. I'm pretty sure it was recreation. Okay. Library of keys, Sandy. Library of keys, Sandy. Library of keys, Sandy. Library of keys, Sandy. Uh, mulch hay 475, brushes um, 2689, box left grant project, uh, construction project cap, uh, capital on the stage. So, Johnson Carter and Rachel looks like. Yes. Okay. $2,120.43, and then um, box lock grant, uh, $250 for a total of $2,464.08. German equipment, parts and supplies. Now that is $17.98. That's the highway. Highway. Not four, though. Do you remember what we get from Jordan? No. Without saying that. Jordan. Bit carbide. C85 upstairs. Large braiding. Was the box of 60. I thought the. They could be the two or the grader. We have like a probe that told me to go. Which I have. Okay. Then we have a probe yeah, I, I suspect that that's the invoice, like Evan saying, or the teeth of the grader. Well, okay. Uh, Let's see. Uh, Let's see. Scott and Darwin launch uh, tax abatement $1,936.51. Menage, the Rocket Road project for gravel stone, $2,225.89. Uh, VMP Healthcare, total of $6,645. Is that going to be reimbursable on the Rocky Road? Uh, it will be. We'll still be in for our match, uh, but we will be getting reimbursed for uh, at least 75% of the cost, and then we'll go to the state for an additional, I think, I think we get 12.5% uh, from the state. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Myers Container Service, Solid Waste Landfill, uh, $470.99. Beautification, um, $63.60. Projects and Events Celebration, $20.03. Uh, very generic beautification, $128.84. Uh, and again, our Events and Celebration, $24.83 for a total of $229.30. Just wondering on that one. So, did we settle on reimbursing people, individuals, and how we want to approach that? Okay. Not yet. Okay. okay. Open approach, tech service, building maintenance, and keeping the village a total of $342.75. Seven days ad employment, um, two employment ads for a total of $561. Staples, office supplies, $38.35. Um, Ditzel, PH and Fisher. Legal fees, $2,224.23. Simquest, supplies, $32.34. Um, tech services from Tech Group for computer support. 3750 and do from the village 3750 for a total of 75. Uh, tech services, computer support, um, and also do from the village for a total of, it's split pretty much 50 50 for a total of 1576 uh, $1, And that's weird how that's not split directly to pay 15. No, we have more email addresses than the village does. 
I think that's the only place where it's not uh, split symmetrically is the number of the Justin, Justin. Okay. Uh, loan payment for Union Bank and loan truck $2,795.56. Interest on that is $125.22. Mark Woodward, tax overpayment $197.13. I don't think that was a tax overpayment. I think that was a donation. I think it could have been, yeah. <laughs> Why would he do that? Why would he owe pay the tax? That's a good point. That's his mistake. Our oh, he's here. All right, hold on. I can't even get my money. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know how to start. <laughs> uh, all right, working down septic. Toilet rental, four hundred and sixty-five dollars. Okay. Any other questions or? Comments on invoices in order. Uh, is the board prepared to approve meeting minutes for October 11th and October 18th? Mm-hmm. Motion, we have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Seeing none, all those in favor, signify saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Ayes have it. Those three, you got the four. And send everybody the Excel spreadsheet on the for the status report. Eric sent looks like it was a form I didn't work and so I sent it out one of the job. Today. Thank you for Excel. I used it. <laughs> Still <laughs> using it. And the only other thing I have is um the art gallery is having a uh, Opening 11 14 and we'll like a very long events permit. Yeah, you just need our approval and then you sign. Right? Okay, what's the board's pleasure? Approve, deny, or approve with conditions? Approve. We approved it last time without any machinery. Sure. Not too long ago. I have a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Any discussion? All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Anything else? Anybody got any questions for Rosemary? Thank you, Rosemary. Uh, review planned purchases. All right, so we are one purchase before the next meeting is uh, plant mix that we're going to be using on Wickham Island. Um, if you've been up on Wickham Island lately, it really needs to be regraded and uh, service needs to be touched up. Mm-hmm. Um, that is our plan. We're estimating 30 loads and cost about eight thousand dollars Okay, any comments or concerns, questions? Kind of other sound free, check with other sources. Uh, no, I, we will be checking with those other sources before we actually pick it up. But we have, you know, we've got our regular sort of menage, Percy's, and Dan's. NATO's and we'll pick it up from whoever has it in stock and good price when we need it. Carry on business as usual. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, well, before we move on, I'll just say the wrong mic for a moment. <laughs> this is over there with the dollar. We've got a procurement policy which says that you can get multiple businesses. Um, I think it should. The issue with having multiple bids for this in advance is it's highly dependent on what's in stock uh, when we need it uh, and who will, who will have it. Um, I could next.
next time I have something like this come up, I could make sure that I've got uh, price sheets from the different organizations or the different uh, uh, bids. So that we've got a little bit more information if we, if we need it about what it would cost from one versus another. I think we should do that. That's part of it. Do you agree that would fall better in line with our procurement <coughs> policy? Is it time sure. sensitive? Uh, to a degree, uh, it's time sensitive. Uh, I think that we need it before our next meeting here, but I, I think we can also work on future practices. If, you know, when we bring something like this forward, I can make sure that we got price sheets from the different bits available to us. Um, the problem with selecting, with us one evening selecting which pit the crew is going to go to, uh, is that that might not, that might be difficult for them during, you know, when they need it to be able to go to a pit that has it in stock. Uh, when they have time and they have to be to get it in time for its need in a project. But us having more information about what the price difference at different locations are it wouldn't hurt anything. And I think you you heard the uh, desire of the board. What's the board's pleasure? Do you want to allow this uh, to go forward? Yes. How do we know? Maybe a lot cheaper if we had our own. But that's what it is. Okay. Thank you. Uh, the other one that I've got that is upcoming, and I don't need approval for this right now, is I want to give you a heads up on our salt delivery. Uh, right now, they are asking for $75 per ton uh, for cargo. Uh, which is who we've used in the past. Uh, Cargill, we've got a pretty good relationship with them and uh, the trucking company that they use, they use Barrett's Trucking. Uh, and we've got a pretty good working relationship with both Cargill and Barrett. Uh, Hyde Park has switched providers to a company out of Canada and likes the results they've got. They are reportedly about $4 a ton cheaper, uh, which is a pretty good deal. Unfortunately, we have not been able to raise anybody or make contact with anybody at the other provider. So I'm working on getting a second quote for salt, uh, but we might end up going back to Cargill. Uh, if these people are so hard to get a hold of when we want to buy from them, I don't know that I want to deal with them if we have a problem in the future. You know. How many tons do we use a year? Uh, we've got an estimated 610 tons. 600. Okay. So no action on that tonight. Just wanted to give you a heads up where we were at. All right. Uh, then into the rest of my report. First item up is the Public-private partnership between the town of Johnson and Vermont Electric Co-op for stormwater planning. Anybody in the public wants more information? I don't have a ton of extra copies, but there are some extra copies on the, the site. Uh, with this public-private partnership, this would improve the stormwater uh, facilities that are currently at the Vermont Electric Co-op. Those improvements could have potential benefit for the town in the future with uh, stormwater runoff from the industrial park uh, across the street. Uh, that, you know, whatever treatment area that we can develop for that here, we could take advantage of that uh, through the other side. Uh, in our own future developments. This should also help with the Jolly's the gas station and uh, and kind of everything downhill from the co-op of the gas station. Uh, at this time, it doesn't require any kind of commitment, specific commitment from us. It's just a 
they're gauging local interest of do we support taking the project forward uh, and I don't know at this time if there would be any cost sharing uh, if this gets picked up by state agencies. Um, typically, these things come with you know with eighty or eighty five percent local cost share. Or, excuse me, reverse that. 80, 80, 80 to eighty five percent provided by the state. The rest being the local cost share. We were approached by Ma Electric. Uh, LCPC is actually the driving force behind this. Okay. Uh, and they've helped connect both us and the electric co op. And the co op is on board? Tentatively. And, you know, it, it's, I believe that they're probably in a similar situation to where we are that we're interested, but we want to see what. What are the actual costs? You know, how much is our share going to be? Are there what are the funds out there for complete construction? But right now there is a lot of federal money coming in for storm projects. And this would benefit the town if we ever were able to develop the Jewish project. It would have benefits to the town regardless, but its biggest impact, its biggest potential impact would be uh, with development of the industrial okay. Board members' thoughts? How about be participating in the cost share? Presumably. You know, again, we don't have any specific offer from the state about this at, at this time. Uh, this is the consultant who did the initial design at LCPC asking if would we support it if they take if they continue to pursue this and try and take it from a initial design stage to a full design, full engineering and construction stage? I'm having a tough time seeing where the town really benefits. A hundred percent taking care of the co-op, which is great. But I don't see any provisions for future extension, anything like that. I mean, it's literally just manholes and pipe to dry well, all on the co-op's property. I don't see why it would cost share anything for them, but that's me. At this time, with where our construction is on, on the industrial park, um, this is kind of the, this does primarily benefit the co-op, but the capacity here would be in excess of what the co-op needs. And so we'd be able to tie to this system in the future. How much of your time is needed to take this to the next stage? To the next stage, virtually not. I'll tell LCPC that we're supportive of them, you know, pursuing this and then they'll come back to us with an offer. Uh, and at that time, we'll have a better understanding of what this is going to take. You know, there might be, you know, call it three, three to five hours, you know, a meeting or two with the co op and with the engineers and with LCPC. And then, and by the end of that, we should have a kind of an offer of what. You know, what's the cost of the town? What's the cost? What's the state going to kick in? And what's the co-op going to kick in? So, you, and you would come back to the board, obviously. Yeah, there, there would be a stage where this could not proceed with the agreement that we're making. That right now, we're just approving them to pursue getting permission uh, to or pursue getting grant funding to take it to the next stage. If they can secure a grant, uh, it would still take our sign on before they could. So what's board's pleasure? They need a motion from us? Or what they need from us? Uh, a motion, motion would probably be enough. Uh, you know, it's- We support it in the process. Yeah. I mean, they're doing, oh, LCPC is doing a few things for us. 
seems like it's another thing that could divert their attention. On their the most important of the things they're doing for us. On their staff time, this they have a stormwater specialist uh, who would be doing most of the work on this. So it wouldn't be the same as you know, we're mostly working with Seth Jensen on building out the infrastructure on, on the uh, on the industrial part. Megan Revere uh, is the general their staff person who does stormwater. So okay. it is different people. We wouldn't be kind of cannibalizing our own projects. Okay. So I'll look that we support this. Um, the motion to support the concept and then second. The motion and second in discussion. It's conceptual. Yes. None. All those in favor, sit by the same aye. 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 Those opposed? Aye. 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 Okay, ATVs. So I guess that's what a lot of people are here for. Um, so almost two years ago at town meeting, the voters asked to work. It's a uh, article under other business proposed for having uh, ATVs authorized to enter the village, and the voters approved it. It's not, it was non binding. Came to a select board meeting. Following that, the select board decided to support it on a trial basis, see how it went. And uh, it took until this season to get state's approval to use Route 15, the state highway. So it, the season's concluded now. And what we are looking for is some public feedback. And at some future time, if the board decides to make it a permanent um, access to the village, then uh, we would need to go into the ordinance and change the ordinance. So the intent of tonight is not for the board members necessarily to voice their opinions. They will have their day, but we're soliciting uh, public input. And so with that, and we want to make sure we got Ken on soon. Ken gives his apologies. He had nothing to happen. So he's not. Okay, I'm sorry. I knew he was dealing with something, but. Um, can it, would you would you mind doing a quick read what's involved in changing the ordinance in terms of timelines? Okay, yeah. Uh, to change an ordinance or to write an ordinance is no uh, simple task. Um, if we were to go into the ordinance and change it, and then we have to uh, we have a hearing on it, and then we adopt it at a following meeting, and after it's adopted, it doesn't go into effect for 30 or 60 days, 45 days. And there's a period of time where any citizen voter of the town can raise a petition. And if they get 5% of the vote, voters signature, Hi, boo -boo. it goes to a special town meeting and the voters will decide if the ordinance is adopted or not. Thank you. I don't think any questions on how the board is implemented or changed. With that, um, we'll open it up. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hot turkey sandwich. Who <laughs> would like to speak to the ATV ordinance? Yeah, so I didn't ask you to uh, put it down, so I didn't wander or anything at your time. Uh, so uh, I'm asking about two separate agencies on Main Street. I reside across from Stony Market, so I have a lot of folks in person who did a down the track. Of course, I'm not an agency or whatever they call themselves, so I have nothing to lay, gain or lose by sharing my experience. Uh, from the time they've been allowed to drive past my house, I've seen and heard two machines that were even close to being loud. They appear to be older machines for my younger people. You know, my age, that's a rather large group, and I'll just leave it at that. I observed that most were driving slower than the cars, and the rest never exceeded the average speed of cars traveling on Route 15. But if noise is concerned from this board, I would put the ATVs on Main Street below the driving. <coughs> below the people driving those four cylinder small cars with obnoxious exhaust. Definitely below the tractor trailers using your gate brake, the also flat village corridor, even below the turbo diesels pulling out of the market. 
These are only my observations and personal thoughts. One last thing about an event not in the village. I was hunting on Clay Hill and heard a rather loud BTV that was revving his engine and being a bit obnoxious. I texted Kenny because I knew he was involved with the club. I didn't know who the offender was until after dark. Another hunter told me who, that he knew who it was. I texted Kenny to share the info. And when I got home, I received a text uh, telling me that he had personally spoken to the person already. Um, to me, this seems to be a really responsive and responsible group that is willing to do the work and make, and make this work. Thank you. Anyone else? I guess I'll speak. My name is Shannon Frederick. I'm the former president of your company. Uh, to my knowledge, I think, as far as I can hear, over the summer uh, incidents, I don't believe there was any reported police incidents for the uh, And with that said, from you know, any vehicle that passes through this town, I'm sure, like you said, the residents here, residents see, there's multiple occasions for something to go. And with ATVs, it's no different. You know, you're going to get you're going to get the one guy just like you in a car, truck, or a motorcycle, or what have you. But I believe this town has been pretty quiet for the summer, and I, and I don't think I foresee it really getting wild or an extensive amount of ATVs running through the town. And I think it's still going to be a good thing for the town itself. I, I believe it's just an input for more people to interact. With the townspeople and, and use your use your facilities, use your stores, use your restaurants, and with a minimal impact that I believe it has, uh, I believe it's a good thing in a lot of places. Thank you. Anyone else? I would say I'm Katie Orst. We live on the corner of Gould Hill and Drag Lot, so we get to see everyone going down Drag Lot plus coming down into the village and I was apprehensive when we approved it, but it's we've had no issues at all this summer. So um, we've utilized it a couple of times. It's nice to be able to run down and get your takeout on your side by side or whatnot. So um, we haven't had noise complaints or, I mean, everyone's very respectful, goes by waving. And so I would like to see it continue. I'm Jeff Pickford, I live at the South of County Sometimes there are larger groups that come through. And um, I will say that the vast majority of people I see operating the side by side are so respectfully and safely. Um, and so, you know, seems like a real friendly group. Always give a nice wave. You know, we're passing each other going in the opposite direction. Um, I would like to see if there's an ordinance that goes forward, something that addresses group size because one or two vehicles together. The noise is like if one of the folks up in the neighborhood is running a jigsaw all day. You start to get 10, 12, 15 vehicles that are traveling together up in that area. Um, it can be, and keeping in mind, my place is set back from the road a bit, but I've been in places right on, you know, Clay Hill where there's a large group coming through and, it's, uh, and you can't hear each other talk. You know, so group size, totally understand the appeal of sort of meeting up, but if there are, you know, just want to see something, something addressing group size, especially in town, because uh, like where I grew up, there were a lot of white motorcycle groups that were driving through, and that in a tightly packed area or in a in town area with a lot of stop signs and stuff can create some interest with the others, and that would be my intention. Okay. Thank you. Mark? Okay. I have a, a few concerns. Um, so there is, has there ever been any enforcement in Johnson? Has anybody, I just heard this man say that there's never been a problem, to my knowledge, to your knowledge. Um, because that to me is an indication that um, where I live, people come tearing down the road. Last weekend, I was out in the cow meadow, probably 300 yards away from the road, and it was, I don't, I don't know how many, but it was really loud. So I'm concerned about the size of the groups, and I think the way to address that would be like how other towns have to say, ATVs are fine for people who live in the town. But when you start allowing these large groups from outside the town, I, 
I just think that we're inviting chaos. <clears throat> and I also am concerned about who's paying for the upkeep of the class four roads. I'm watching the um, mine road slowly degrade. Howay Road is pretty much over with now. I used to go grab my truck for day 10 years ago, and now it's no longer usable. And I don't know if we have an obligation to upgrade, keep them passable, because the mine road is slowly degrading because I don't up there every day. And that's that's a concern. Now, I would be much more in favor of having ATVs available on all roads in Johnson for Johnson citizens. But when you want um, and I think Crasper has done that, and I think Bakersfield has done that also. I was saying, people in town, you pay the taxes, you maintain these roads, you can use them with your ATVs. But I'm really concerned that we really have no enforcement. And our road, you know, I'd like to see it for Johnson citizens and not for the whole world passenger. I think there's just some I'm concern about the long term effects of ATVs. For the people who live out in the countryside and have these large groups going by on weekends. Um, we did get a report from the sheriff's office and what was it, 22 complaints? 22 over, complaints. Over the season. Uh, majority of them were on two roads outside the village. Uh -huh. um, we tried to get clarification on any village complaints, but uh, we Not never heard back from them yet. So. I'm sort of working on pulling together a video because it's easy to do. You drive down the road, you got your phone, you watch them fly by and you have a video. Yeah. Um, I also live and work in the village and have business right on Main Street, right next to the village green. And I was shocked how few were in the village and shocked in a concerned way, actually, because. The way in which we were told as a community that this was going to benefit us and impact us was with economic development. That people, you know, to come on their ATVs and spend money in our local businesses. And I, I saw very little to know of that activity. And I kept waiting. We kept waiting. We're like, when are the ATVs going to come? When are the ATVs going to come? And they just never really came a few here and there and there was one larger group one day that ate at the food trucks which was great but unfortunately it was before the season actually opened or the signage the proper signage was up and they weren't actually supposed to be there so that was unfortunate but um so i guess my question to the group here representing um the club is where were you all <laughs> like honestly like i i i was shocked i really thought that we were going to see sort of this economic boom from um, the TV activity. And I mean, my business didn't see a penny, what I was expecting to. I mean, you all are artists or appreciate or whatever. <laughs> but I thought maybe Butternut Wood or Roll Mills or even the downtown. I, I just didn't see any activities. So I guess I'm wondering what, where you all were and why did you come? And, what so I'll answer a couple questions. Uh, to answer your question, I mean we don't we don't promote as heavy. We knowing this is a trial year, we don't want to hammer. I mean, just like you didn't want them here in the first place, we don't want to pound the town first season and and say everybody got. Who would want to do that in any situation of any source? So as for the advertisement of the town, it's kept fairly low at this point because we don't want to, like anybody else, we don't want to invite a thousand to come in and have other people have concerns over too many. So it's either too many or too few. And it will come. It will, it will gain. You've got to you've got to let things bleed in a little bit and let the information get out there without drowning the information and creating people. Just come to town, you know, and I, and I think to answer your concern of not enough, like any change, it will come. So I'm going to try to catch other people first, and then we'll get back to sure. the rest of you. And way in the back. So well, I noticed I'm supposed to know. I noticed um, increase, uh, increase numbers on my road, and I thought, I mean, what I noticed was that living on the Dock Road on the Hoyt Road. Um, 
I had a lot of difficulty with ATV traffic because it's been very loud and there's been a lot of it. But last summer it was very decreased. And I was wondering, so were people told not to, not to ride or not? Really? Well, I think there was just as many people this year as there was any year. Okay, let's just right yeah. just I'll get back to you. Oh, sorry. Um so yeah, I was wondering about that. And um from my personal experience, I would say that possibly one in five drivers was curious and would go the speed limit. There was a lot of um a lot of late night partying and um there was a lot of Riders that were not so courteous as well, but uh, there was a decreased number, which was interesting. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I'm Darrell Weston. I live on Dry Lock Road. Um, as far as who maintains a class four road, I maintain that one. Um, they, the traffic of ATVs to come down, they split right there and they would either come down to the village or continue on the, the existing trail. I think that a lot of people didn't know that the village is open, to be honest with you. I mean, if you never, I mean, there wasn't a big sign that says, hey, go down to the village and buy a hot dog. And um, most of them were continuing to go down um, towards Jalvis. Um, I guess, uh, I don't know where, we either want them or we don't want them. So if they don't show, we shouldn't complain. If they show, we should benefit from them. But as far as maintaining the whole ag road, I've seen a lot of mud trucks come through there. So it's not just ATVs that are doing any damage to that road. I've lived here my entire life. I see a lot of stuff. So um, just singling out ATVs coming up, tearing up back roads. Is, they where they turn, they have two turns on on drag water, and I maintain them both, and I've never had an erosion. I don't have an erosion problem there. I just go to smooth that low. Thank you. Um, I probably count for about half of those 22 calls, I um, guess, um, which is on Sinclair Road. Um, when I first started seeing ATVs there this summer, um, I reached out to you folks and said, what is the rule for ATVs on Sinclair Road? I got one person who said, I see you're trying to make a point. Um, another person uh, passed the question on to Ken, who never got back to me. And another person said that I should contact the Sheriff's Department every time I saw one. And I didn't do it every time I saw one, but I did it most of I saw them. Um, if they're coming onto Sinclair, they're either coming up from Route 100C, which they're not allowed to be on, or they're going onto Route 100C, which they're not allowed to be on. So my experience was an increased ATV usage. And while they may or may not be allowed on Sinclair Road, which is apparently undetermined from the select board or from the police officers who visited me one time, not, not a request, but they, they came. I was just calling to report that they came. They said they read through everything they could find and they could not tell whether it was legal for them to be on Sinclair. There is an ATV speed limit on the speed limit sign uh, next to my house, which would imply that they're allowed there. But again, they're not allowed to be on 100 C. And they were definitely coming from there and going to there. So my experience was an increase as as well as illegal use of a community. So I did not have a good first impression of this experiment, even though I'm outside the village. And from what I'm hearing, it seems like things were kept low key so that there would not be a huge influx. So I would say that this is not a good indicator of how things would be if this was allowed to move forward. Thank you. Um, I did see a, an ATV on through when I did see it, I reported it to the sheriff. Um, he went close to my house and went up the way over Um, and it does seem like there weren't many ATVs in town. And I think, in order to really possibly understand what how they will impact the village, is 
to have another trial here seems like that would be a reasonable thing to do. And we move fast into, you know, making it permanent, but allowing another year of, uh, of test. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone who has not spoke yet? So okay. Um, we we're not going to take <coughs> any public input via Zoom after we start having live meetings, but is it just one? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Make an exception. <laughs> Hi, all. It's Margo. Can you hear me? Yes. Go ahead, Margo. Thank you. Um, yeah, just listening to all the speakers, thanks. There are a lot of different, um, I don't know, viewpoints and actual experiences. And um, I'd just like to amplify what I think it was Dee who spoke last that um, it might be a good idea, particularly in these like really interesting COVID times, rather than um, craft an ordinance now. If possible, I'd like to hear your thoughts on extending the current trial period for another season, like spring, summer, and, and fall into 2022, and then revisit so that we have uh, more information, maybe a little bit further out from COVID, and we could uh, perhaps really have a discussion and craft something that makes sense. Seems too soon right now. Thank you, Myra. Kyle? Yeah, I would I would reiterate that I mean clearly sorry, what was it? Shannon. Shannon, Shannon, just you know, um you sort of said what I was suspecting, which is that you're keeping things low key, you're not showing us the full potential, you're you're keeping you're holding back on coming into the village and letting people know about it. So with that information, it's like okay, so we so we haven't really had the trial period because we haven't seen what the actual activity will be, and that's what we want to see so that the select board can make an informed decision on whether to change the ordinance or not. We want to see the full potential because that's what we'll be living with should the ordinance change. So, thank you for answering my question there. And because I was, that's, it was just so strange. And we were like, where are you? <laughs> um, so, that, that is a different question. Thank you. Want to address that? I, I would love to address a few, few comments. Um, one will back up a little bit to the gentleman's concern over class four rooms. Um, Green Mountain APB and Basel have put a ton of material down into cutting and also on the leg room. Uh, this year we put 96 ton on cutting all alone just to fix up cutting because it was the water, the water is there, it's not washing, and we wanted to keep it from that way. Uh, on Hawaii Road, same instance, we did put a ton of material in Hawaii Road itself, went through, cleaned up all the water, and everything, and that. So, as for that, I, I think we're doing a, a, myself, I think we're doing a fine job at keeping class four roads that we use in the best shape they can be in. Uh, next concern over traffic, I'm a little confused on do you want a lot or do you want a little? I mean, we, we don't say, hey, all can come, everybody jump in, just like anything else, why, why would we? And if you want groups, you want tons of people, which wouldn't normally be here unless we promoted, it's, it's an average ride in the district. Every weekend is an average ride for the average person that goes out. It's not like they force themselves to come out on weekends to make a point in a town. So publicizing it more doesn't really affect. It's going to have a negative effect on you one way or the other. So I'm not sure which way you want us to go. Uh, before I let a back and forth here go on, is there anyone else who would like to speak? So, uh, is it the intention moving forward if this ordinance would ask to advertise? I mean, is that not what is the plan? It's a plan to say more that towns are open. More than what? Sorry. More that towns are open. Oh. 
So does but everybody that, it's on not everybody knows it's open. So it's an, as far as I'm concerned, it's an average year of average people. Are you gonna get five thousand dollars, three thousand dollars, two thousand dollars in a given amount of time with travel? You can't say that with anybody that travels in or out of the town. Nobody can. Nobody can predict everybody's reaction to what they're gonna do when they go for a town. So Changing that strategy on a longer waiting period to see if we advertise or don't. I, I don't see the point. I don't. I think this year was a very average year. Hi, uh, Spencer Leggett, uh, Johnson resident. I'm actually the VP of the Remounting to you Riders. Um, just to go off of the things Shannon was saying. Um, Last couple of years, obviously, it's been difficult with COVID. And the thing is about COVID, ATV sales and ATV registrations has gone up significantly. A lot of people, you know, are, you know, we can't do much, and so they're going to the outdoor approach. So sales are up. So if anything, it's gotten busier over the last two years since COVID. Um, also, to kind of Shannon's point, we did put it on. Uh, it's called the Recommend app. I would say like 85% of writers have it. It's like an app on your phone and it has it shows that Johnson Mills was open. Um, we also had a sign in the beginning of uh, Bull Hill that said village access, you know. Um, I don't I, I want to make the point like it's not us as a club trying to hide the fact like so barely anybody comes in, so we're saying we have no problems. You know, we want the business to come in and this and that. But also the chance point is, you know, we posted on our Facebook page that was open and over 304 members in there. So, you know, like chance point, we don't want to, it's like a damn if you do, damn if you don't flood it, you know, we get so much traffic in groups of 30 or 40, like some people's concerns, you know, I know Newport has been open for the last two years. They've had great success up there. Um, so far, my knowledge on any complaints, I'm not saying we're Newport, but you know, they have a lot of business up there. But you know, I think it was a full year, everybody, a full a real trial. Maybe next year, maybe a little busier because you know, we didn't get the village open until I think it was July. So, yeah, Carl and Daryl, you know, that. Strategically, I, I can't see if I run or not because I didn't see any, any activity. So it's so that's why I guess I'm saying, yeah, do another trial so that we get another go at it because it's really impossible to make. And plus, I don't make decisions like this, but um, it's, so it's it's hard for us as business owners and people that live in the village to know whether it was a good year or a bad year. I don't know. But it does make strategic sense from your uh, sense from your point of view to to keep things mellow so that there's no problems, so if ordinance changes, and then we see what actually it feels like to have ATVs in the time. I mean, I can see how that would be that would be um, strategic. Um, so I say, what's the downside to doing another trial period? And show us, show us the business, show us, show us uh, the people, and then we can make a real informed decision. This is not really, this is not really full full telling. From what you're saying, Shannon, you said more will come. It's going to be busy. It's going to be this, but let's see if it's going to be busy, so that we know if we like that or not. So I just, I just one last thing for me. I think I don't think Town of Johnson will ever see the influx of machines because it's a dead end. Um, Newport sees a lot of business because it's part of a loop. It's part of you'll take off from here and I'll drive to Newport and come around and I can stop and get something to eat, get a gas in a couple places. Johnson, you actually have to set out to come to Maple Fields to go back because it's not part of anything. Um, as far as business, you're, the only businesses that's really going to see anything is gas and, and 
food. I, I don't think you're ever going to see anybody buy art supplies when you're going um, ATV. And I mean, you're not, I don't believe that you're not, I'm not trying to be rude by any means. I'm not, I'm just trying to say, I don't think, no, I'm just trying to say that I don't think that anybody ATV is that that's not the purpose of that day. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> I'm not, it's, it's, yeah, I mean, it's absolutely, I mean, they go for a while. <laughs> um, I just think that the perception of this is going to be this great destination for ATV is not. It's we were told it was going to be. But I well, I mean, I just don't. I mean, it's like yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, they can't. Well, I don't know if you know, but they can't go nowhere. So well, you turn around and go back. About, you can't go to Morrisville. Okay. No, you come to Johnson. To, People come down here, I mean, you can't, when you hit Johnson, they come down the store, you need to turn around and go back where you come from. Because so there's no big rule. It sounds like it's a... Because okay. if you start... Let's go to, to, to Shannon. <laughs> <laughs> so so one, of, one, of, one of the purposes of the village was to bring some in town. The other purpose was to bring people from the other side of the village mm -hmm. to the system that want to ride. But if we... We can't force people to do anything. We can't force people to write in. We can't. It's an average year. It, we put it on a map, like everybody has it on a map, and people go or they don't. Is it going to be a big influx? You never know. Who knows? You don't know. You don't know if your store is going to be really busy tomorrow or if it's going to be slow now. That's the same as AD game or same as anybody coming into the village. If the school's closed, it's busy. I'm sure your store is busy. It's school. Open one way or the other. Yeah, I just I want to get. I, I, I think we've heard both sides of this, and both both sides of the particular concern have been pretty well aired out. I think if there if there's new feedback from people that haven't spoken that want to speak up, um, that would be my recommendation. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I think you're right. I think we've heard unless somebody's got something new or different to say, and I see your hand go up. Yeah, kind of new, but just circling back to this idea where it's not always super clear what the thought or not. And I think that makes it very clear. That's the sort of thing. Okay. Okay. Well, I want to thank you all for coming in. And is there some is it something new or different? It's something new. It's just about um, engines. Um, we're going to spider engine, go when you're not driving and idling. There's a lot of idling that happens. And I was wondering if there's an ordinance that can we change, can we do something about that? Because it's just really a lot of the people who live around the area when engines, AC engines are idling. That's just the thought. Okay. Uh, with that, I do want to thank you all for taking this time out of your evening and coming in tonight. Um, at some future point, the select board will be making a decision, uh, either going, opening up the ordinance to make it permanent, doing another year trial like was suggested, or deciding that it did not work well. Uh, that will be a decision on the board. But thank you all for coming in. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Brownfield Committee Assessment. So, uh, for the Brownfield Committee with LC, the LCPT directs, uh, after some conversation, Doug is willing to serve on the committee again. And uh, I would be willing to serve as well. He does need to be appointed. It's for his pleasure. Saying <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think we're in the comment period. Yeah. We have a motion to appoint Doug. We have a second. Is there any discussion? Okay. That's it. I'll open it up first to board members. If there's no discussion. Anyone else have comments? 
Um, so we're we're going to discuss it at um, our next meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm I know all all of you can't come, but I think it would be really important for somebody from the select board to come to our next meeting, if that's possible. To talk about to the talk Brownfields about committee or Brownfields the report. the report. Just to have somebody be there that really knows the report well, because we're all new members. And I think I would appreciate somebody from your select board to be there to meet. Our select board rep was Doug. <laughs> and so he's the most knowledgeable. If he's there, okay. you would have that. Person, okay. I'm. I don't feel like I am. I'm not sure about any of the board members either. Doug was our rep. And One I one. was on that subcommittee. You were on that actually did the plan. Yep. Um, but the you're going to have someone from LCP through there speak yes. about funding and saying should they should you move forward with one of the sites. So that would be a joint select board right. village thing. So it might be worth listening to that person. Yeah, and there's I'm just gonna say this. There's also going to be discussion on the garages, which is owned by yeah. yes, everybody. So I would appreciate the book. When's the meeting? Please. Huh? When is the meeting? Uh, six, it starts at six o'clock next Monday. You're on the second Monday. Monday. Yeah. Thank you. That's also the. President's round table. Yes. Okay. Any other discussion? Um, yeah, I have a question. Are does the village also have a rep or no? Yes. So I got two. Oh, there's two. Um, it's uh, BJ and Steve. But are they? No, wait a minute. That's the merger. No, yeah. not yet. Not yet. Sorry. I, I don't believe that the village gets to appoint somebody to serve on the Brownfields committee, but Meredith did serve on it. But I think it wasn't a village appointment. I think that she was able to serve on that committee through uh, possibly the electric utility or, or some. I, I think it was some. She did serve on the committee, but I don't think it was a village appointment. And I, I don't recall uh, how or, or why she was appointed. Uh, and it could have been a village appointment. I could just be wrong. With that. I believe that the town and the village have in the past been represented by the same appointee, which for a long time has been stuck. All right. Any further discussion? No. All those in favor signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed? But Moldy is so nominated. That's like a tangential point that if the, if the village trustees are going to be, uh, I, mean, I don't know what their plans are, I don't know if they know what their plans are, but if they're going to be putting a significant amount of money into either rebuilding the building that's there or um, uh, rehabbing it somehow, we should probably. Uh, formalize our agreement with how those buildings, we have kind of a handshake agreement. They take care of that garage, we take care of our garage. Mm -hmm. but they're gonna be putting significant amount of money into that building. I think both for their good and for our good, everybody should know kind of what the terms of understanding are in terms of- Is on the memorandum of the village, the village's asset, or are they gonna put a million bucks into that building and then half of the immediately becomes the town because it's on joint owned property or second village. What happens if uh, something you know goes wrong from a liability perspective? I think that's uh, something we should be talking about yeah. too. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're right. Where it is jointly owned at the end of the day, we each have the responsibility and the benefit of the building. Absolutely, but you know, we have to make some good. But, but there has always been a handshake that you know the village maintains their building, the town mm -hmm. maintains theirs, and uh, the liability of the cost is borne by the who owns it. 
or who uses it, I guess I should say. We both own it. But there should be maybe some good memorandum of understanding. And there's two million dollars. Two. Mm -hmm. yeah, I'll hold them over there jointly on I mean jointly used. Yeah, you're right. There's some that are jointly used. Yeah. It's a good uh, mm -hmm. It's not, we're talking about the merger, which is another thing, right, that has to be discussed. Yep. It's a pretty complicated, very Definitely. expensive, uh, we need to know what we're doing going forward, big time. So I, I think it would be really great if somebody from your board and Doug is there. Well, so there's anybody who has the opportunity to <coughs> sit in on the village meeting, it could be benefit from it. We could also just request time at our next meeting. They better get time. Your board could come and request a short piece of time in our meeting, be it short point meeting. There's a lot of questions. No. I mean, I think we should. I mean, I'm only one person, but I think. We should some time get together mm -hmm. and discuss like a lot of stuff so that we know how to move forward. Because I look at this stuff, I know no one knew, but I go, holy cow, like we need to make together, we need to make some decisions because it's a lot of money for everybody. And we want the town to grow in a really good way. And there is an unbelievable amount of money out there to be had. <laughs> and I would love the select board and the village to hire somebody to look into all of those grants. It's just amazing to me <laughs> that we are going on. And I would really, I think we need to just talk about it. Please. I know you guys, and when I say you guys, I mean the yeah. trustees, you're at a disadvantage because you're operating without any full time staff. Uh, and that's probably what's making this more complicated is. A lot of these discussions would happen between a narrative and Brian, and then they would bring it back and report back to each board. Uh, but without that capacity right now, it is making it more difficult. Um, and we probably should have some more joint meetings. Mm -hmm. I think that would be really helpful. And I think we really need to talk about hiring somebody to write those grants. I mean, there's a there's a lot of them out there. You're you're busy, the narrative is working 15 hours, and if we hire an economic development person, I think it would be really helpful. It was years ago. You won't, you won't get me to disagree with you. Yeah, yeah. So I think we need to go there again. And something you might not find the same person that we no, found. No, no. Okay. Thank you. Yep. So you're welcome. Uh, if anybody's able to make a trustee meeting, that would be great. Evergreen Ledge. All right. So I've had conversation with Don Perkins and Margaret Gibber. Uh, they are interested in purchasing a single plot. Uh, their plan is to be cremated, which uh, we allow up to three uh, cremated remains per lot. Uh, so they would be under that limit, but uh, they've gone out and inspected the location. They're fine with it. Um, we're ready to sell them. They're ready to buy. Okay, what's the board's pleasure? Motion to uh, sign the deed. Is that the motion? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, 
Motion to approve and sign. Approve and sign the Second. A motion and second. Any discussion? Um, all those favor, signify saying aye. 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 Opposed? And you also want to talk about Grove Cemetery while we are here. Yeah, Grove Cemetery. We received a complaint uh, last week about uh, Grove Cemetery. Uh, in particular, that we are not maintaining the fencing and borders of, around the cemetery. Uh, I am meeting with one of the neighbors. If you recall, we, we had opened this discussion a while ago about improving the cemetery the fencing there, uh, installing fencing on some of the borders that we don't have currently have fencing. Uh, I'm meeting on Wednesday with an individual from, send it down to Royals or to um, I'm meeting with an individual that uh, the, the Whitehill, the, Gary Whitehill is the neighbor uh, who lives there, and there really is a fence on his property. I'm going to go down and meet with him, try to come to an agreement about where the location of the fence should be. Uh, I was able to discuss space with him, so I got an appointment on Wednesday, and that would avoid us having to go to the expense of hiring a surveyor to establish our car borders. We can come to an agreement about where the fence should be with the uh, So, right now, I'm still meeting with can we agree on where the fence is supposed to be? And then I'll get a quote on the fencing itself. I understand from Duncan that there's some remnants of a border there. In parts. Yeah. Uh, it's not a four sided, uh, but there are parts there that can be used as guidelines. I think what's new to me is that information from the complaint that there's a bit of allegation that stones are being damaged because there's no border there to sort of keep people from operating inside that increases the priority in my head. Yeah, that's the first I've, I've heard of it full sense. I mean obviously we have a statutory responsibility for it. We have to do our but in my mind it's a matter of what priority do we give it? Because yeah. we have so many other cemetery things that we Because there's damage that increases. Right. Is everybody basically in agreement with the plan that Brian's laid out? He's going to meet with the adjoining landowner and see if they can establish. And if that gets recorded in the town records, then it would be as good as it is. And they get a couple votes on facts. Yep. It may be too late to hear the get the fence put in, but at least we could get the boundary line set and established. Yeah, then it may not be too late, but it'll depends on some of the time. Okay. Uh, I'm hopeful that we'll have a pretty easy agreement and easy discussion, and we can start getting bringing quotes in. And uh, if everything falls into place, it'd be great if we could have this discussion there next week. Okay, everybody's in agreement with that path. Go forward. Racial Justice Committee. All right, so uh, we had known that Portia Foss has resigned from the Racial Justice Committee. Uh, and more recently, we had uh, over the weekend, Eric Hutchins has also resigned from the Racial Justice Committee. We'll believe you received both resignations. But so what's the board's pleasure of the item business would be to accept their resignation or deny? No, I have a choice. That was I need a motion. Yeah, make a motion to accept. And typically we send out a thank you for serving type of letter. Motion to accept Portia Foss's resignation from the Racial Justice Committee and Eric Hutchins' resignation from the Racial Justice Committee. Do we have a second? Any discussion? Brian, are you going to post the positions? That I don't think it needs to be in the motion. Yeah, we, we can post the position. Um, I would 
suggest, and I would like to see us take this opportunity to post one position, and that would allow us to get down to that odd number. I think that there is value in having a committee with an odd number, so any vote taken is a tiebreaker vote. And we can take that up separately if we want after this vote or whatever the board's pleasure is. Does everyone see the value in that or does everyone want to post two openings, two positions? I see the value in it and I support it. I just, and we don't have that warrant and I think we should warrant it and give the committee an opportunity to weigh in. When, if we only if we drop the membership by one person, I think that gives us four people. Sophie, we've got Sophie off each app. Three current active members. Raven, I forget. That's okay. okay. I have my own. Oh, Raven, uh, yeah, okay. okay. So one more member. We should, we should warn at our next meeting to get feedback, but I am supportive of going to buy members. Would the board like to have this go over to the committee for their input before we post? Whether we're going to post for one or two positions? Well, we could post and, you know, depending on the candidates. I think we should differentiate the number. We should get their feedback if they'd like to give it. Okay. Go ahead. I'm just here randomly. Not necessarily <laughs> as a member of the committee. Okay. I would um, be happy to bring this up with them. Then I don't to say, like, you know, at least to have the opportunity for them to put it consistent as necessary. But I would seem to fit more consistently with every other committee. So, um, but I'm happy to bring that up. Okay, thank you. With that any other further discussion? Favor, same part, same like. Aye. Both both. Uh, school merger vote is remember that two years ago, town meeting, the voters uh, approved non-binding, but asking the select board to host a special town meeting to decide on a, uh, we would separate from the merger with the Omaha Supervisory Unified District or whatever it's called. Um, as this is, I've been back and forth with Walter as he was a proponent of the uh, emerging and uh, name uh, chair of the school board, Mark. Mark Nielsen, and trying to get, make sure that they're both prepared and on the same page on how this process works. Um, I suggest, and I had to wait a little bit of time because our, uh, Walter was dealing with a, a family issue, but a suggestion from Walter, which probably makes sense, as this does require an Australian uh, ballot item, that this would be part of town meeting day, as that would be the, probably the best representation of people getting out to vote. Um, we would have to have a special public hearing 10 days prior or within 10 days of the, the vote. That would be an opportunity for uh, you know, public input or feedback or, or questions. Uh, this would not be really ours. We would not be, we would only provide the opportunity the space. We wouldn't have a position. It would be Walter and uh, Mark fielding the questions. And- uh, Sorry, then, why is Walter fielding the questions? But uh, he's the one that was the big advocate for, for unmerging. And he was pretty knowledgeable of the process. And Mark being the chair of the school board and a I understand Mark, but I still don't understand Walter. 
All just only brought it to the town meeting. He's the big advocate for unmerging. So he would be the one to speak to why we should get out of the merger. We wouldn't. We would not have. I we would. yeah. Or anybody else from the public could speak for or against well, for whatever reasons they believe are good. Walter doesn't have official it's just the right. He has no primary official. advocate. He's just a primary advocate. Uh, and I also would suggest as we get towards the town meeting, we would run this through our attorney, the article as a wording, because it will have implications if it happens to be approved by the voters. But that's about all I, I just wanted to bring that to the board for awareness and make sure everybody felt comfortable with that as part of our warning for town meeting. We won't actually do that until the end of January, but uh, just to give you a heads up, that's where that whole school merger discussion has gone. Unless anybody got any questions, we can move on. Okay. Record retention. So I've got a slightly updated record retention policy for you. Um, the only records that are currently addressed by this are what we're referring to as uh, routine security recordings, which were classified as logs, uh, which do not have a required uh, retention period, and security recordings. In specific, would be security recordings that we recordings that we pull for closer examination. Those become reports and are retained for a minimum of three years, and they'll be retained on our common person. This does not address a lot of other types of records. Uh, that will be something that we work on over time to uh, add and address to this policy, but this will get us started with the record retention policy, and it will address the uh, kind of immediate concern of we that we, we have the security cameras in the garage. We there's some interest in getting a security camera for the skate park. We've had other discussions about security cameras, and we don't have. I would look, I, I would really like to have a policy in place to kind of handle those records before we start generating new records. Um, you know, I would like to expand this up to all of our records over time, but let's start with not uh, with new records coming in, making sure that they're covered by the policy. Is this a, a lead boilerplate thing, or how did you? I mostly wrote this with the Secretary of State. Okay. They had something. Yeah. Okay. What are you looking for tonight? Uh, adoption? Adopt? I, I, I think it's ready to adopt. Okay. What's the boy's pleasure? Board prepared tonight to adopt, or do they need more time? Motion to adopt. And the motion to adopt. Do we have a second? I don't have a problem on that. Um, I think the trustees like at least because we have shared employees in the same building and documents for the village and documents for the town and everything. I think they should get on the same page. Um, but I don't have a problem with that. I do think that that's true. Uh, especially for any documents that could have overlap between the two. Our security camera footage, again, a benefit of starting here is that- It would only be town. If we don't have any shared security. Uh, so- Do we still have the motion on the floor, but- Do we have a second on it? No, I do not. Okay, And we do have a second. Okay, now discussion. Um, so what happened, what made, okay, so there are a list of appropriate GRS and DO documents, by the way, I think there's a typo here, it auto-correct to 
Yeah. Um, the, but anyway, and I'm actually just right above it too. Correct <laughs> in that paragraph, uh, but you can read through it and look at that. Um, what what is the deal with anything that falls outside of this list? If there's anything that falls outside of this list, uh, this is not every uh, GRS. This is the a selection of GRSs that most municipalities have records that fall under. Here. This is not an exhaustive list. And we don't currently address all of these. Uh, we currently are only addressing uh, operational and managerial records. Uh, but these are the. So wait, sorry, when you just say that, when you say that, you mean right now? Right now, our only two records that have policies associated with them, if we adopt this, are referencing the GRS 1000. Dot one thousand uh, one hundred three, which are operational and managerial records. Um, within that document, there's a list of uh, one hundred and fifty different types of records, and then each of them has a definition of what are the What's the statutory requirement for retention on a document of that type? So what we will, what we've done for the, these two, and what we'll do for all the others, is when we identify a type of record internally, we'll then go and identify a corresponding guidance document for that record within probably just this selection of guidance. Uh, it could exist outside of this guidelines. It could, exist, it could exist outside of these guidelines. There are more guidelines than this that exist. These are just the most common one that address operation, typical operation for uh, municipal land. We find it in here and we look for the guidelines about what do we have to do with it, what are the, the statutory requirements for it, and classify that and apply it. Do we, have, do we have a process set up for this before we adopt this? Like a process to add the rest of our records to it? We don't. I'm talking new stuff. So if we're applying this lane and new things coming in, yep. do we have a process or a workflow already defined so that these can be, when they come in, there's no, we're not losing time trying to figure out what to do. For new types of documents. Yeah. I don't think we, we do have any any process uh, to identify these. You have something in mind? Yeah, I was just thinking, um, I was actually thinking we should adopt this, but I'm thinking we shouldn't because if we adopt this policy and we have new files that come in that fall into any of these classifications, you pick your 150 type to whatever one you want. Um, is somebody just going to be like, oh, what do I need to do and run and see Brian and then Rosemary and then the person sitting next to them and no one's gonna have an answer on how they make sure that they're compliant with this thing. Um, you know what I mean? And you know, just rinse and repeat for any new type that comes in. So I'm just thinking we should probably have something set up logistically support adopting this before we adopt it. Okay. You got some thoughts on how that might happen? I have to think about it a little bit more. I mean, this, this is a really obvious case of yeah. new documents coming in. We do not have a, any system in place for dealing with video files, yeah. apart from our Zoom, which aren't addressed currently either. But it kind of falls into our we retain all documents right now. Uh, many, many documents well beyond the statutory requirement because we don't have a policy in place. Um, and because we don't have a policy in place, it makes it difficult for us to dispose of any records. Uh, and I would like to move us towards disposing of more outdated records. 
Uh, so I was more worried about going backwards and I hadn't really given any thought at all to other new types that could come in in the future. Because if you're talking about logistics for bringing new things in, you'll want to consider that negative case, right? That yeah. of what are we going to do and not delete those new records that are already in this policy accidentally when we do clean up later. Oh, I'm just thinking we yeah. Content management is no joke. Yeah, <laughs> I guess we have a motion on the floor with a second, but now the seconders having second thoughts. I just want to discuss that. <laughs> well, can we? The board could take a vote and uh, add more nays than yays. Can we, can we work the table? There's already a motion on the table. We probably should do the motion to the table if there's a motion. I don't think so. I, I think if the motion is voted down, I can take the feedback not as and never speak of this again, but more as it needs a, some more refinement for it. In its current fashion, that very good job. Yep. All right. Motion. Okay. The secondary and the motion are and the, the both withdrawn, withdrawn their motion and second so there is no longer a motion second on the floor. I was gonna give Eric the glory of voting down something I was second. Yeah. <laughs> I was reasoning out of that. I could see it coming. <laughs> like I can't vote against this. Before we move on it, I do want to express a point of concern. Okay. Modern recordings, the way they work is they continuously record over the data that's that's there. So unless you request the data, nothing's actually safe. So we, by operating the security cameras, which we do currently have at the garage, we are currently you know, losing video data without policy as to how that data should be treated. That's gonna get worse with the skate park. Yes. That's why you want it. That's why I wanted to at least address. Can you bring something back in a month? Yeah, I can bring something back by November. Okay. It is November. Our second meeting is November. Okay. Okay. Uh, Manchester Stormwater. All right. So, Jason, for doing this work. Yeah, thank you. Well, he's quite the artist, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Did you? Well, the trust is made aware that their foreman did not follow their vote on this. They may have said that they have their foreman. Yes, I had the discussion. Our foreman did all that stuff. He did. They did not travel to the site together. Uh, I understand that Troy did go to the site and make his own inspection. Um, but yeah, our foreman did have to go down, make his own inspection, and draw the map and, and do everything. The volume's not It looks like it is. Thank you. So, That seems to be the overwhelming sentiment from the uh, trustee board. Oh. Nice one that worked with you. So I have many concerns with all of this. Uh, one, if not maybe one of the more important ones, is the town does not typically deal with stormwater drains. These are all stormwater drains, there's four of them. Majority of them, if these lines are all accurate, would appear outside, the stormwater side, collection side, is outside of the town right away. 
It goes across the road under a cul uh, with a culvert, and it continues on beyond our right away, all the way and dumps into the river. Um, as an entity that doesn't deal with stormwater, I'm not even sure if what we're doing is legal or not because we don't dump stuff directly into the river like that. Um, and all of these culverts that are outside of our right away, we should not even be touching them. They're, we, have a, we have a huge liability. Our insurance would not cover us outside those right of ways. So, and none of these were something we put in, as we understand, right? We may have initially installed culverts across the road at some point in the past. Um, I, you know, I'm led to believe that at one time the road was a lot higher than the surrounding property and that a culvert would have been passable at that time. And then you could install a regular cross culvert. Uh, but currently, yeah, the, the, the mill side of River Road is too high to accommodate a, uh, a cross culvert. But there's three more that he found. Yes. Was he able to inspect the culvert at all, or it's probably kind of? He inspected at least the one closest to Railroad Street and uh, had a lot of concerns about the condition of the culvert. Isn't that the contribution that he replaced? No, they did the second one. It says no. Second. There's only one time I recall that we worked outside of the town right away, but yet we had to get lawyers involved and a memorandum of understanding with the landowner that the work we were doing was a one time deal. We would never be held liable for it or have to do any future work. It was all on the land loan owner. They had to sign off and understand that. Um, that's something that would be required before we could ever even go outside of our right away and do any kind of work here. But if we're laying culverts outside of the right way, that's a huge no-no. So what are our options? Legal options. I don't know. That's a good question. I think it might be another joint meeting discussion. Well, so that this town's going to yeah, I don't see where that's going to go. I mean, if it was the town, we would just dig a ditch and have culverts across the road into another ditch, and it would run off somewhere into a meadow, the woods, whatever. Um, so let's do that. You want to dig a ditch all the way across that? And we're talking about the whole length on both sides. both sides. Does it need some curb cuts? Should just hire a concrete truck to fill them all in. Okay. Then we'll blast that. Okay. Okay. CJ should have gone to the village and asked. He shouldn't have come to the town. I know why you came to the town is because we went and fixed that one. When the, the road was there. Yeah, when the road uh, well, had a sink. I don't think CJ has a, you know, not to put words in his mouth, but I don't think he has a strong opinion on whose responsibility right. it is. So I think it's. I think you're right. Well, I, I think we can, we can say that should have happened or trustees should do this or that's. But, 
Philip Chessies don't agree with us, and they haven't. Um, you know, we're stuck. We can't force them to take responsibility for something that they don't, that they don't feel is their responsibility. Is this dash line the village boundary? That is. Okay, so from this map, it appears one of the catch basins, half in the village and half out, and we have one catch basin that's completely out outside the village. We could try to coordinate with CJ about him hiring somebody to do work inside his right of way. And we'll do the work in ours. And there would need to be drawn up some understandings that each would have liability and responsibility for their own section. Uh, and I, I would recommend that at this time um, we make it clear with the village that uh, you know that this is stormwater infrastructure that is part of their their purview and we would expect them to participate if they wanted to have any input on it. They don't want it. Yeah I don't think they have any desire to participate at all. So are we permanently adopting this stormwater infrastructure? No. I mean, my feeling is that there's a clear line between the town and the village. It's right there. There's dots in the line. Everything to the left, we'll take care of. Everything to the right, it's not our problem until our road washes out, unfortunately. But it's not washed out right now. I think, would this be a good spot for a memorandum of understanding for future culvert failures? We can replace the culvert from the right away to the right away. If they want to catch basin, they're going to have to hit the hook on the culvert and do that. It's not the town's responsibility. It should be the village. They played this one fire and just did nothing. Well, we typically do not allow the homeowner private property to have a catch basin and hook onto our coal. But they did, they did that on Maple Hill with uh, the Max property. Yeah, the they didn't get permission to do it. You right. Maybe that's how we're in this situation. That's how we're in this situation. That's part of what got us in a huge amount of trouble. So the other option is to ditch it sure. at a large expense. But well, we already got 20 grand in, to one of them. So we can multiply that and get an extra 60 grand. If they fail, we have to replace them. We don't have to replace them. Or a little bit of rolling a single. Yeah. Um, what would be the right way to do it and fit with the town is we would have a ditch on both sides of that road and just have some culprits that went across. So tell us why we shouldn't do that. And CJ said at the last meeting that they filled that in. About the catch basin, uh, no, I think he said it was prior to them purchasing, which moved it before, moved it before Manchester. We don't have a final decision on this, no, tonight. I will do a little bit of investigating on uh, ditching. What the cost we're looking at is to do 
make predictions. I guess if nothing else, luckily it's not in operation anymore. Okay. There will be a future discussion. I'm sure of that. Um, salt shed improvements. All right. Uh, quick update on salt shed improvements. We left that in kind of an unknown state that we had asked for approval for. Uh, one vendor had promised to do a little bit more research, but there was a slot open from the one vendor to do the work. So we wanted to kind of reserve the ability to engage with them before this meeting if we needed to. We've decided not to engage with them. Uh, our current plan is that we're going to do a little bit of kind of testing on our own of taking uh, the sprayer out and looking at and try to see where can water get in right now and what can we do about filling that with uh, some uh, epoxy or expanding foam um, and just see how effective is that for one year. You know, if that proves to be really ineffective quickly, you know, we'll look at uh, a different solution. But, you know, yeah, we wanted to reserve that spot, but that uh, we have decided not to engage with them. I just wanted to give you an update on, on where we were at with this. Do you know where they're at with the other items there at the town shed? Uh, remind me of the other items. The water coming in the building. No real progress on uh, getting the repairs, the, the, the structural repairs. On the boiler or something we're planning on next summer, talking about, or? Uh, we're going to work. And we put in a request to uh, county, but uh, we're we're starting to get some quotes on boiler and heating system in general improvements. You know the 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 guys that don't like the modding heaters that we've got in the uh, garage area that much. I think that we could actually make some pretty big improvements to kind of the usability of that space. Yeah. Uh, no, I'm not sure how many board members. I know members of the public probably haven't been in that garage, but the the break room in the office and that whole area is in a little kind of corner of the space, and it doesn't have a roof on that space. I mean, it has the, the building roof, but that building roof is you know 20, 25 feet tall, and so you've got all this collection of little rooms that are all open above them. So if we roof that over, roof the hallway that connects them over and put a door in, probably retain heat in a much better in the area that we need most of the heat retained. Yeah. You know, we need to maintain a minimum level in the garage area, but we have to open those doors and beat the trucks come in and out so often that we're not, we don't have the same expectation of retaining heat in that space that we do against, you know, the break room or you know, where Jason's got to use the computer, you know, these places where the guys might like to take off the, you know, parkas and uh, heavy boots and things like that. So I think that that could make a, I think it's a small investment that could have a big return for us. Yeah, sounds like it. Is there, can I ask, yeah, um, is there any mold in that garage? I think there's probably some mold in the bathroom, uh, but, and the you didn't Evan and Beth, you didn't really see any when you were no, I didn't see any. Yeah. yeah, the bathroom has some uh, water damage around uh, some plywood and pergola flooring, uh, which water in the flooring in there. <laughs> well, it's, there's something over the concrete. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. But yeah, the, there is there's one small space where we have some water damage and it probably is a little bit of mold related to that, but there's not mold throughout the building. Uh, if there that, that, that we're aware of. And we're not aware of any other water damage in the building there. Were those two garages built at the same time? No. I don't know. I don't know. 
teacher built that. Yeah, I, I think that. Yeah, there's a site now, but uh, remember Gerald owned it and then he tore down the main building. So those two may be originals. I don't. Yeah, the, there have been a couple different constructions there. They're not in the oldest photos, but there's a lot of room in between. You know, when it was, it's heyday as an operating mill, uh, when there were a lot of photos and it's current iteration. So I, I have no idea when they got put in. Okay, anything else on that? I don't have anything else. Okay, uh, the only other item I want to bring up just quickly is next meeting. I will be at Deer Camp and not here. I would not anticipate Mike will be back. So that would make it uh, imperative that all three of you would be here to be a, have a quorum. And you also will have to all, for any actionable items, all agree on this to approve. But if you all think that you're going to be here, then set forth with meeting, regular meeting time. If not, uh, we could change this. Okay. Uh, if there's no further business. Oh, I do have something. Okay. I just want to say happy birthday to our chair. Yeah. Oh, Thank happy you. birthday. <laughs> I actually had a great birthday for this morning at 1014. Newest granddaughter. Hey, no way. Thank you. Did they name her Erica? No. Any further business? Oh, I'm going to change a motion to enter into executive session. Thanks, Kyle. Sorry, I, sorry, Eric. I just had oh, one thing, and it's it can be discussed further at another time, but um, I just wanted to ask about, and Brian, I don't mean to put you on the spot here, but um, so this be blunt. I, I know for myself, and I've heard from some other committee chairs that we're a little frustrated with communication between ourselves as chairs of committees and um, points of contact on the town in terms of just getting information that we need to best serve our committees and do projects for the town and you know um, be good chairs. So I'm just wondering. How this should be addressed if it's if it's a if it's a if there should be some good protocols in, in place as to like okay if we email or call on a certain day we can expect a reply you know within 48 hours or whatever it is it's just it's just that and so um sometimes I feel I'll just speak to myself that there's just nobody on the other end. <laughs> And there's just there was a there was a time where we had a meeting scheduled. Some people weren't able to come, so we were trying to do it by Zoom. I was desperately trying to get a Zoom link and all this, and I just wasn't getting the information. So then we had to just cancel. And it really sucked because it was going to be our big mission vision sort of uh, meeting for the coming year. And anyway, it just it just sets us back. And um, and I want to be I know I want to be an active volunteer, but I have to also feel like. Being supported, and able to do it. I, I know Brian has a, a lot on his plate, I know, and I know. a lot of things going on. But uh, you know, you, you can always CC myself or one of the other board members, and uh, hopefully, between the two or three of us, we can make sure of something this follow up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Figure out how to do. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else? Uh, I would entertain that motion. I motion we enter executive session mm -hmm. to discuss the mm -hmm. position of public works operator as allowed under one ESA A1. So if I can, I want to let me talk for just a second. I want to clean us up a little bit about how we're handling this particular section of the executive session. We should. If we're using the first category, we should first have a motion that it 
Okay. Puts it as substantial. Yeah, thank you. So I tried to write it in under item 10 as two separate motions that we would first find because of negotiations, uh, because of ongoing union negotiations and prospective employees, it would place us, us at a substantial disadvantage. So we would make that motion and vote on that first. And if we find that to be true, then we can go to executive session because the premature disclosure is what enables the executive session. So if you withdraw your motion, or you hadn't finished it yet. Withdrawn. Okay. You want to start over? So you need a motion um, due to ongoing yes. union negotiations and possible negotiations with respect to employees. Pretty much sure disclosure of the composition would place the town at a substantial disadvantage. Okay, we motion on the floor. We have a second. Motion and second. Any discussion? Seeing none. All those in favor, signify saying aye. 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 Those opposed. So we've had a motion approved that we would feel that this should go into executive session. I would now entertain a motion to go into executive session. Yep. Now the second part. I am tired. You're good. I have a motion to enter into executive. Session to discuss filling the position for public works operator as allowed under 1 BSA 313A1. We have a motion. Do we have a second? With motion and second. Is there any discussion? All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Show us in executive session at 844. 